This is it, Will. This is the Galaxy S21 and S21 Ultra. And it's not any type of speculation. These are the official images which have now leaked. So, well, that's that. Uh, ahead of the announcement is coming up pretty soon, so it's not surprising. It's right in line with the renders that came from the variety of leakers previously, but to see it from Samsung themselves, to see the official press images leak, this is likely going to be part of the web page when they actually get done with the announcement. It kind of confirms what many of us had, had speculated and gives you a slightly more detailed type of look. Now, this image on the right, you can see the comparison between the regular S21 and the Ultra model, which adds that much bigger camera module, but they found a cool way of making it less of a less of a harsh hump, less of a harsh cliff at uh -huh. the edge of the camera module. They have rounded it off now mm -hmm. with this glossy material, made it ever so slightly more elegant, I yes. would say, which is tough to do with the size of these camera humps that we're dealing with 2021. Now, the other notable characteristic on the non-Ultra model, the two-tone flavor, the two-tone setup, mm -hmm. which has been, I mean, that's a rarity for a flagship smartphone for us to see it in a two-tone setup like that. And so it's a, it's a, it'll be interesting to see how decisions are made across the color options. Now, so of course, this is the all black ultra model and it is a like a lavender rose gold non ultra regular model these devices are set to be announced january 14th and the release shortly thereafter january 29th now it's interesting i'm reading the article here on phone arena and they're talking about other versions upcoming versions for even more color options than we've seen previously particularly for the Ultra model. So that's probably the most, going to be the most popular Ultra model in the all black look. However, it's looking like it might also be available in brown and titanium. Brown. Have we seen a brown phone? Yeah, we have. Haven't we? I don't know, maybe like a Huawei device or something. I'm trying yeah. to think when we saw brown. Brown's a f uh, an interesting one. People, it's very polarizing. Some people think it looks sophisticated. Yeah. You know, maybe like a brown leather. Uh -huh. And then other people think it's like an old man type of thing. Uh -huh. What you doing with brown? Yeah. I don't know where I land on that. Plus, it's close. It's really close to black. So it's like, why didn't you just get black? I was thinking bronze. Bronze, okay. On the yeah. lighter side. Yeah. The S21 is arriving in four colors at launch, gray, pink, violet, and white. S21 Plus will, be, will have black as well as silver and violet, while the 21 Ultra is going to have black and silver, and that's it, at least at launch. However, speculation here on Phone Arena is that there could be a green edition coming out later, possibly a 2021 Olympics model with gold rings. They've done that in the past. And also possibly a red S21 version for the holidays. And Mr. Ice Universe actually leaked a list of all of the upcoming models. And uh, it seems to indicate that brown, dark blue, and titanium coming for the S21 Ultra, at least in Europe. So the color games are taking off. We saw... A variety of uh, uh, colors, a huge selection from Apple on the recent iPhone launch. Uh -huh. And now, oh, I remember that one, the onion. Onion and, onion and garlic. garlic. That's those, a brown phone. Those were some of the most unique colors. Those are from Realme. Those are some of the most unique colors we ever saw in the studio. That's true. Yeah. That's a good point, Will. Uh, but yes, it, it does appear that customer selection and personalization through the color choice has become a big feature of a flagship purchase and Samsung is following suit here with a tremendous number of options available and there you have it that's the S21 S21 Ultra let me know what you think of the look now that we have an official leak official press images today's sponsor Brooklinen 
These are very wonderful, soft. You know what, Will? You spend yeah. a lot of time in bed. Yeah, that's me. You spend. The cat. I don't know how, how much you sleep in. Is it about eight hours or? I do. Yeah, you're right. It's actually eight hours. It's eight hours. Yeah. Imagine that. What a life you lead. Eight <laughs> beautiful, <laughs> silent hours. Yeah. Imagine this guy. Magical. Do you, do you put the one on, over the eyes? Do you put the sleep mask no. over the eyes? No, you don't have to do that. I have the sound machine. Do you need to put the earplugs in or no? No. No, no, no. It's quiet enough. Yeah. Wow. What about as far as the darkness? Do you have to, is there a window you have to put the black thing on? It's not the completely black, black okay. but uh, it's, it's dark. Otis doesn't get you up early in the morning? He does. He does. Yeah. So you got to go to bed early if you want to get that eight. Uh-huh. All right. Well, anyway, a lot of people underestimate how much time they spend in bed and how your bedtime experience can have a drastic impact on your day if you enjoy going to bed, if you look forward to it, and uh, if you sleep soundly. Well, people, they overlook their sheets and how your sheets contribute to that experience. You have a wonderfully soft sheet. You have a, a linen sheet from Brook Linen. All of a sudden, it's a game changer. And I, you might be able to juice an extra hour out of it. And all of a sudden, you got all the health improvements. I mean, I'm saying it. They're not saying it. <laughs> but uh, they actually branched out. So, so they have a, a variety of sheets available from the classic to the luxe to the, all the way up to the linen. Airy and effortlessly chic. Made from the highest quality flax in the world. Mm. Now, you know the thing about linen. It breathes... An incredible natural fiber, oh, linen. Yeah. And I mean, they even got cashmere for guys like cashmere. Willie Do. Anyway, life is short, Will. We're in 2021. It's time to give yourself a little upgrade. Upgrade that bedtime experience. And also check out the other items that are on the site because they got the comforters. They got the soft PJs. They got the soft materials, even for the, the shirts, the basics, which is mm -hmm. kind of nice as well. Brooklinen has over 50,000 five-star reviews and counting and is so confident in their product that all their bedding comes with a lifetime warranty. You don't even own something with a lifetime warranty, Will. Now's your no. chance. You can buy sheets, bedding, and pillows at once and save even more cash because we actually have a promo code for you. It's Lou Later. Head over to brooklinen.com and use the code Lou Later to get 10% off your first order and free shipping. That's B R O O K L I N E N dot com. Don't forget the promo code Lou later for 10% off your first order plus free shipping. You can also just click the link in the description. Just don't forget the promo code Lou later at checkout. It's a new iPad Pro coming in March. That's the word. Hmm. And it's all about this mini LED display. I had an experience with mini LED recently on a, okay. on, a, on a TV, on an upcoming TV. I don't know, even know if it's not announced yet, so I don't think I can say much about it. But anyway, I was looking at a mini LED new model display, and I was curious about it because everyone's talking about mini LED. It's going to replace OLED, has these benefits. It's like OLED, but doesn't have the drawbacks of OLED, etc. Now, I know... There's going to be a variety of versions of mini LED, and I can't act like I've seen them all. But I put the OLED display of a similar scale next to the mini LED display, and maybe you would say that's cheating because you have them side by side, and mm -hmm. at home you would never notice this. But for my eyeballs, mini LED, hmm. it ain't OLED for so, my eyeballs. So you think OLED is still the... King Dude, of it is still super obvious to me the difference. Now, I will agree that the mini LED stuff is an improvement over the previous LED tech, particularly on a large format display where you can really pick up on it. This is probably going to be less evident on something like an iPad with a really dense set of pixels going to be probably going to be fine either way mm -hmm. and when you go with mini led the, there are advantages as far as uh, pe people people perceive that it's going to or and there might even be evidence to suggest 
that it's going to be less prone to burn in. Although I, th I feel like I've had a lot of OLED products. I still haven't had burnt myself personally. Mm -hmm. Higher contrast ratio than regular LED, higher brightness than regular LED, deeper blacks, not quite to the OLED level in my experience. Power efficiency, and it uses inorganic gallium nitride. That's that GAN stuff. That's that charger stuff. Yep. Which won't degrade over time like OLED. So I still don't think it's quite OLED, but anyway, it should be nice nonetheless, a nice little improvement. It will, however, interestingly, make this next 12.9 inch model iPad a little fatter, which is kind of unusual for Apple, that this tech is going to result in a fatter iPad. I don't know that people will, will really mind. It's probably going to be a, tr a tiny little bit thicker. But what's interesting about this particular uh, rumor here posted, reported by Mac Otakara, is that they claim that the mini LED is only going to be for the 12.9 inch version which is a little upsetting. I actually prefer the 11-inch version of the iPad. Hmm. I think for one-handed holding while you're reading, that extra kind of lightness to it, but again, it's a personal preference thing. So I don't know if the 11-inch is just going to keep the old tech because this rumor is only pointing to that feature coming to the 12.9. But it's also not saying that the 11 is dead, right. which some other people had speculated as well in the presence of the new iPad Air, where there's a lot of crossover scale-wise there. Uh, anyway, that's the rumor for the time being, so I may have to uh, give the 12.9 inch a shot anyways, but we'll have to wait and see if this comes true. It's supposed to happen in March. That's pretty soon. I guess uh -huh. if you're in the market for an iPad, you might want to hold tight for now because March is only a couple months away. The investor, the famous investor from the movie Big Short. Did you see Big Short? Yeah. When it came out, it's been years. I it's been years, it so we shouldn't be asking you for Good movie though for a synopsis. You just remember you enjoyed it. Yes, yeah, it was pretty cool. You had uh, Christian Bale in there. He actually played he played this particular uh, investor, Michael Burry, who predicted the collapse of the housing market and shorted it and made a boatload of cash. Right, mm -hmm. called it so to speak. This guy is definitely short himself on Tesla. And the thing is, we've been talking so much about how Tesla's unstoppable and everybody wants to stock. And here's a guy who has a history of calling a very big short. And he's saying, I'm about I'm doing the same with Tesla. All right. He said he expected Tesla stock to implode in a similar fashion to the housing market. Obviously, that's not happening right now. <laughs> approaching $900. Obviously, it's not happening right now. But he says, hey, my last big short, it got bigger and bigger and bigger too. Mm. As everybody told me, I was crazy. Mm. Now, these two things are not exactly the same. The housing market and a car company. The housing market and a charismatic CEO who has a tremendous fan base. They're not exactly the same. But it is true Many make the case that Tesla's stock price is not necessarily, uh, I don't want to say deserved, but reflect, reflective of their um, the amount of business they do mm. because you have that hype machine contributing and people looking super long-term. Like yourself, when I asked you yesterday, Bitcoin, Tesla, whatever happens yeah. to be. He highlighted that Tesla gained about $60 billion in market capitalization on Thursday. On Thursday, which, by the way, Will, hmm? is the equivalent of General Motors' entire market value. On Thursday! That's impressive. So he claims that this, this stock is ridiculous. It's not reflective of real stuff. And so, therefore, he's going to continue to short it. However... Oh, by the way, he did it a different way. The $60 billion to the market cap is equivalent to one GM, two Hershey's, three Etsy's, four Domino's, and ten Vornado's. I don't know what Vornado's is. is it? it must be some type of restaurant. That's yeah. just how much Tesla can gain in a single day. Uh, now, there is a story, I guess that probably comes in my next article, about a large investor who actually changed their mind. 
Tesla stock skyrocketed about 740% in 2020, has climbed already 16% this year. This year, I'm talking about 2021, Hmm. which is like, what, five days old at this point? Good Lord. Anyway, he's shortening. You can you can decide. You go with him. You go with Tesla. I don't think people are buying Tesla like a regular stock. Mm-hmm. I that's the thing. I think it's they're buying it in a similar fashion to how they're buying Bitcoin. They're buying a future that they can't even predict, but they're betting on other people to predict it for them. Yes. Yeah. It's literal hype train, but not really though. Not because- fully. Not Tesla's fully. Delivering. There is a product there. Okay, here's the next. Here, this is the next article over here. The complete opposite of the last one. Do you remember this guy we were talking about yesterday? Chamath, Chamath. Yeah. Palahap. Uh, Palahap. <laughs> I gotta get this right because I have okay. a long last name too. So I, I totally understand. Palahap, Palahapatia, Palahapatia, Palahapatia. Sure. We can go with that. Palahapatia. Chamath Palahapatia says, he says the opposite. He says Tesla's stock could triple from current levels, making Elon Musk the world's first trillionaire. Mm. Imagine that from day to day, from article to article, article, article to article on the same day. You, get, you have to read these two things as a human being on planet Earth. Mm-hmm. You're a person. You're trying to navigate. You got this guy saying it's the biggest bubble he ever saw. Next guy saying, get in now. It's only going up. And they're both, and this, they, I don't know if the other guy's a billionaire. This guy's a billionaire himself. But then at the same time, myself, I say, well, this guy's obviously got some Tesla stock. Uh-huh. So it benefits him personally, yes. likely, uh, for that to happen. But either way, he doesn't have to share information with anyone. He's obviously making money mm-hmm. and has been successful. So you take that for what it is. The billionaire investor told CNBC on Thursday that Tesla's stock could be worth three times its current valuation. He said Tesla was a distributed energy business and that he believed for a while the world's first trillionaire would be a person fighting climate change, delivering clean energy, allowing the world to be sustainable. Now, I know there are complexities, difficulties with battery technology and mining, and it's not. Maybe it's cleaner. I don't know that it's completely clean. He told investors, don't sell a share of Tesla. You keep every single one because we're going all the way to the moon, making Elon Musk a trillionaire in the meantime. So, by the way, as far as Musk's wealth is concerned, previous episode, he became the richest man on planet Earth. 20%, he owns 20% of Tesla. So when you look at that market capitalization, just chop out a quick 20 for him. Yeah. All right. And he also owns 48% of SpaceX, and they're figuring out ways to make money with satellites delivering the internet. So you tell me. But when you start to look at it as an energy business and you start to think about their potential on some of the stuff that they haven't had a chance to fully flesh out yet. I know I tweeted, Elon, about the solar roof. I want to get that roof, and I don't know what's happening with Canada, and it seems like it's sort of a wait wait and see at this moment. But when you think about it in those terms, if – if we can start to get a better ecosystem around this variety of services, you think about the charge infrastructure that they have going on for the cars. Then you think about the home battery and the, and the, the solar roof, which is, I mean, look at take a look at it. It's a great time. Looks amazing. Three times stronger than standard tiles. Beautiful solar without compromise. I understand in certain regions it's been difficult to get your hands on this stuff, but you can imagine you paint this picture, you put it the whole way through, Will. And it's like, yeah, maybe they are, maybe there is more to that company and their and their aspirations and how they plan on doing this thing top to bottom. What do you think? I mean, when I think of Elon, it the some keywords that really like come up is future and like tech centric. <laughs> like even like the boring company. And I was reading an article You're about You're a big boring, boring guy. <laughs> very, very um like open ai um working on ai systems very cool mm. very very cool mm. that and type of, link like come that on. type of thing attracts people there's a certain charisma there there's a certain magnetic attraction to people's money and that's the part of it that appears unstoppable right now by the yeah. way the other investor i was looking for was rbc they have been a long time tesla bear and they have recently upgraded Tesla 
to sector perform from underperform. They increased their stock price target from what was previously at three hundred and thirty nine dollars. That was their target. What they thought where they thought it was going to level out. Mm. They upgraded that to seven hundred. And here's a quote from RBC. There's no graceful way to put this other than to say we got Tesla's stock completely wrong. So it's becoming tougher, man, to make these calls as the thing keeps skyrocketing. And as you can see, there's, you can get whichever take you want to get. You can go find it. Buy, sell, bubble, hype, future, crash. You pick. Choose your own adventure. Yeah. Apple wants a piece of the action. We already talked about it. And now we have a story here. We recently talked about how Apple was going to potentially get involved with Magna to uh, possibly manufacture their upcoming car. Magna International, a lesser known company than the automakers because they make cars on behalf of the automakers. But now we get this report that they're in talks with Hyundai as well, Korean car company, who themselves are working on a brand new electric vehicle lineup. And working on autonomous driving, as essentially probably any car company would be doing right now. So you had a report in the Korea Economic Daily that said the negotiations were underway for Hyundai to manufacture Apple's vehicle. Now, you read a report like that and you're like, does Apple really... I understand that they would be having these negotiations, mm -hmm. but do they really want that information out there? They're so secretive compared to other companies... And, like, is this is this Hyundai bragging? What is this? Mm. It benefits them maybe more than it benefits Apple. Yeah, maybe it's just leading uh, breadcrumbs, confusing more people by, you know, having meetings with different car companies and being like, okay, well, let's just have it out there. Well, after the, after the original media. report went live, yeah. the... Uh, Hyundai, they called in to update the report twice. So they were boasting it. They called in. No, they called in to update to sort of to sort of back off a little bit. Oh, so update okay. number one, they changed. They changed to we understand that Apple is in discussion with a variety of global automakers, including Hyundai. Okay. Early stage discussion, nothing has been decided. So they said, no, 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 not just Hyundai. They're talking to everybody. Mm. Update number two to Bloomberg. They switched it to, we've been receiving requests for potential cooperation from various companies regarding development of autonomous EVs. Apple out the door. Mm. So somebody made some phone calls. Mm. Somebody pick up the phone. They call Korea and he said, hey, about those meetings. It's not for, that's not for the Korea economic daily yeah that was a secret geez so they come with the updates and they say yeah we can't really commit to any of that either way uh, i thought it was a bit odd as much as uh, i know hyundai makes quality vehicles they're in the jd power they're in there mm -hmm. and i know they're doing the electric thing because they got the bts collaboration going on yeah. to promote their new electric lineup ionic ionic yeah but I'm just not, I was thinking it would be a weird one for Apple. Mm -hmm. Because. To collab with a Korean company? Not just that it's a Korean company, just that of all the automakers, it's just hard to figure out why. Why them? Why it would be Hyundai. Yeah. Yeah. Beats but, me as well. Yeah. So for me, I do, it does seem like. I'm buying into the third update, which is Apple's probably testing the waters with all kinds of manufacturers, mm -hmm. seeing what could be offered to them, maybe touring facilities, seeing what's possible, thinking and talking about timelines. I mean, I would be doing that if I was them. Mm -hmm. This next article takes a totally different approach, talking about vertical, uh, vertical integration and suggesting that Apple should partner with no one, that they should do everything from the ground up. Reason being that they could secure themselves a larger margin. Now, something stood out to me in this particular article. By the way, I think that's very difficult to do, particularly if you're on a timeline, to do a car from scratch when you never made a car before. But something stood out to me in this particular article. Apple, very successful in the mobile marketplace, very successful in smartphones, right? 
according to this, according to this uh, article, smartphones are a five hundred billion do dollar total addressable market. Five hundred billion. It's a lot of money. Many billions. Apple has one third of that market. The mobility market, that would be cars. Yeah, cars would be in there. $10 trillion. Mm. You imagine having a third of that market. Uh huh. Now, I'm not saying Apple's going to get a third of that market because it's all regional and stuff. You can't even, a lot of cars in certain parts of the world not available elsewhere. Moving cars around is more difficult and all the rest mm. of it. But if you think about the fact they had that footprint, they have that, it's a known brand in every country. Mm -hmm. Unlike you and I, we may see some Chinese brand car and be like, I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. Or some car from India. that You have cars in India. Or even a car from France. Yeah. I mean, unless you're into it, then you know all these brands. But you see what I'm saying here. Mm-hmm that they could take that brand and ride it all the way to a nice little chunk of that $10 trillion. Apple would only need a 2% share of the automotive, a 2% share of the mobility market to be the size of their entire iPhone business. For That's, those of you just okay. listening, I just yeah. made a facial expression silently. You, yeah, you made a funny. They only need a 2% share to be the size of their iPhone business. So this just, for those right. saying, oh, why would Apple want to get involved in cars? There, This is yeah. why Apple would want to get involved in cars. Holy moly. Okay, let's not be hasty here. Oh, I'm being hasty. Oh. Uh, they still have to build it. <laughs> they still have to build it. Which is uh, apparently a lot of hard work. Well, anyway, this article is also stating that through this vertical integration, they could tap it into the, how they've gotten so interested in financing recently. Mm -hmm. They've got their own cards and stuff, and you're already financing phones, so they already have your credit. They, you, you could work that into financing or leasing mm -hmm. for the vehicle. Yeah. So they've got that piece as well. And then, of course, they've also got their ecosystem within its entirety. But this individual suggests that they should do it themselves, which I think... Sounds a little far-fetched, a little hard to achieve uh, compared to partnering. And last one on the Apple car. This, uh, this article here on Bloomberg suggests that it's way further away than we think. As everyone sits here getting excited. Mm -hmm. Just like you, you were just saying there, don't get, let's not get hasty here. Yeah. You use the I word hasty. Uh, you're right. It's going to take time. And actually, this is a really... Uh, Mark Gurman wrote this article, but it's really detailed, man. It talks about everything that has happened with Apple leading up to today in terms of cars. Mm. They thought about this thing since like 2014, mm. and they've revved up a few different times, getting close to, you know, getting close to a physical product or at least a prototype. And then they took, and then they took their, they took their foot off the pedal. Why do I have to do that? They took their foot off the pedal and they backed off a couple of different times saying, okay, maybe the time is not ready and, or maybe the time is not now. Maybe we're not ready. Mm -hmm. And so we you go through this article and you look at their hiring that they've been doing and they got so many Tesla people. It's scary. So they're revving, revving back up. They're revving full. Oh. They got so many Tesla people. You're sitting there saying like, I was joking about it previously. Oh, it's easy to, create an electric vehicle company just go hire everyone from the one that's already doing it mm -hmm. that's what apple did so they're poaching is that the term well i presume everything <laughs> is done in the correct it's like an internal war. i'm sure everything is done in the correct way and you can bet that uh mr elon is probably gonna at some point speak on it because yeah. you know he's aware of it but i mean this is let me see here Apple in recent months sh shifted an executive known for his work on vehicle interiors and exteriors to its car team. In 2019, Apple hired former Tesla engineering vice president, Steve McManus. Uh, he's a, he leads a development group focused on car interiors, fabrics, car testing, and vehicle manufacturing. He reports to Doug Field, a former top Tesla vehicle engineer, 
who now runs the Apple Car Project day to day. So they got those guys. This is what's crazy, man. Mm. You spend all this energy, you you put all this intelligence into a product, and it all it all derives from people. People make things. People who have ideas, people who can execute. If you can move those people around, you can move products around. You can slap your badge on that product Mm -hmm. in this fashion right here. And that's kind of how it goes in the corporate world, Will. You and I, we have no idea about that. No, not at all. We just, I'm I'm not trying to update my LinkedIn. (laughs) You understand? But obviously, these dudes caught a better deal from... Whatever Elon was doing. Yeah, handshakes. And, and all of a sudden, they're over here with an Apple logo. Mm-hmm. And they know exactly what's going on over at Tesla. Mm-hmm. So there's a whole timeline on here of who they've hired and where they came from. Self-driving, specialty type people, car software people. They have moved from this idea of maybe doing an autonomous platform maybe being software focused to now you look at these guys who are apparently working on car interiors, Mm. which kind of points away from this idea that they're working on software for other automakers Mm -hmm. and points towards the fact that they're doing the real deal and they're ready to go and they're revving it up, as we said previously. But it's going to take time. And speculation here is that it's at least, based on where they're at right now, at least a half decade away. Half decade, that's five years at least. So you were right. Don't get too hasty. But I don't know, man. With a market that size and a company at the scale of of Apple, maybe they could beat that deadline. I don't know. Maybe they could get out before that. All right. Speaking of Tesla, they did a quiet little update to the Model Y offering a standard range variant with the lowest price yet, which this was in question, actually, because Elon Musk at some point stated that they weren't going to do that model because he wasn't happy with the range on it. Uh, 244 miles EPA estimate. But they went ahead and did it. It's on a site. $41,990. The that, that makes it the cheapest Model Y. The long range model, $49,990 to start. And the performance model, just under sixty grand. So, decent little cost reduction right there. Quiet update. And the other thing they launched on the site for that model is the extra row of seating which i don't know if you even knew you could get that in the model y of course it's there in the model x model y is a bit smaller but they do put a third row in there as an option now Hmm. it's a seven seat option it's a three thousand dollar option third row seating for two easy entry into the third row i'm a bit skeptical usb-c charging back there a sliding second row which is kind of important probably to be able to get into the back Fold flat second and third rows and electronic fold flat releases in the trunk. This uh, particular option not available on the performance model for some reason. Hmm. It's on the long range or on the new standard range model. It's a two to five week lead time for that option in the US. I think it's going to be pretty cramped back there. So unless you're trying to put really small kids and you're probably going to lose your entire trunk because the Model Y is not a huge vehicle, but I guess people want this at least as an option. Bigger families with bigger, big families with small kids could probably throw them in the back, uh, the very back, and maybe get some peace and quiet up front. There you go. And it's, and by the way, that's a lot cheaper. Oh, why is it coming in 35,000? Is that because the one I have on this article has, uh, oh, after potential savings? That's their thing with like, and then you save X mm. amount of dollars per year because you don't use gas anymore. Well, the purchase price. Yeah, the real, the real purchase price, forty one nine ninety. Yeah, never mind a potential savings. Everybody is changing away from WhatsApp. I don't know if you knew this. Really? Well, I don't know if it's everybody, but <laughs> this enough people hit me up where I, where I realized, and then of course we put the clip out. Mm-hmm. Yesterday and and of course, it's just been it's the topic. It surprised me how big of a topic. I know a lot of people use WhatsApp, but people are just very upset about this particular change to the terms and terms 
of service that mm-hmm. seemed to indicate it's going to be a lot of sharing with Facebook. Mm-hmm. Now, Facebook said, no, nah, it's just like, it's not going to change anything. And it's mostly for businesses to track across platforms. And But people don't care. They saw it and they saw that there was no opt-out option. Mm-hmm. And who knows? If enough people leave, maybe that opt-out option will come in. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. It's either, it's take it or leave it is essentially how it was positioned. And I don't think that's a great tactic. <laughs> Take it or leave it. Mm-hmm. People were like, all right, I'll leave it. And they've been trying to figure out where to go if they're going to leave WhatsApp, leading to record downloads of the Signal app. Now, I don't I don't know about the other one, Telegram, right? Telegram? Yeah, that's the other one that people are considering, I guess. It's either between Signal and Telegram, and, and both are competing for to be your messaging app. And both are uh, obviously focused on privacy Mm. and not data collection. I mean, Edward Snowden uses Signal every day. So if I mean, tells you all you need to know. Yeah. Now, Signal has been hitting records on the App Store. In fact, uh, verification codes for people to sign up, they were delayed across several Mm. cellular networks. They couldn't even send the verification codes fast enough for the number of people who wanted to sign up. Wow. I mean, yeah, good for them. Now, here's the other thing about Signal. Well, number four in social networking. Signal is headed up by the former WhatsApp guy who, once they got acquired from Facebook, immediately had beef with Zuckerberg and bounced. And then he told everyone to delete Facebook. And he went and made Signal on the premise of being a private messenger. So if anybody would know, he would know. Right. He would be your guy. Goes by the name of, uh, I want to make sure I get his name correct here. Uh, Brian Acton, the former WhatsApp co-founder who left the company after it was bought by Facebook in 2014. This is his company. Mm. So he's your guy. So Signal is hot and anybody looking for an alternative to WhatsApp who doesn't like that terms of service, it doesn't want to sit around and wait. I guess Signal is your go-to, or you can look into the other option there, Telegram. Do you uh, use WhatsApp? I do use WhatsApp, but not much. Not there'll much. be like there'll be like one with the with the other. I have the other coaches on oh, our yeah. team. Like yeah, yeah. They, if you got to put a group of people together, I don't want to try to force everybody to go to some other app. Because, but I guess if it's on your phone, you're you're bleeding all kinds of data. Because it's got its hooks yeah. in all over the place. Facebook too. Um, yeah, who knows? Maybe I'll maybe I'll pitch it. I'll say we're all going to Signal, boys. I don't know. Yeah, watch a Lou later and uh, get up to date with the latest. Oh yeah, I I just I send them the link to this clip. Exactly. I'm you like, don't okay. Have to say anything. That's it. There you go. I already said it. Beijing has ordered Chinese media to censor coverage of the Alibaba probe. That's a hefty headline. Uh, this is coming from Financial Times. Are you surprised about this? No, I'm not really. I mean, mm. we already kind of heard that's what was going on. I think the surprising part is the level of severity. Mm. So according to sources close to the matter, this type of warning of, hey, don't touch it, is at the highest level. Yeah, it's serious. It's the highest yeah. level of don't touch it. It's the same as political strife and... uh it's the most sensitive that it can get for don't touch it. Let me tell you what I'm saying here. So obviously, just quick recap. People said, oh, he went missing. Then his fortune sort of fell a little bit from the moment he spoke out. He obviously is in some sort of a disagreement with the leadership in China. Then they're like, nah, he's fine. He's just laying low. And everyone's like, well, what is laying low? I mean, it seems like a pretty high profile guy. How long can you lay low for? Why would you want to lay low? Mm-hmm. Et cetera. Like it didn't really solve it, the laying low part. Especially if you have a talent show to judge. Yeah, exactly. Got to get out the house you because know. you're needed. Yes. Uh, that So his last public appearance was in October. And he did criticize China's state, uh, state-owned state banks at that moment in time. Here is, uh, at the end of December, the Chinese government's propaganda arm directed... Propaganda arm. So this is... Financial Times is going all out on mm-hmm. a discussion around China. 
directed media outlets to strictly invoke the official line on the antitrust investigation into Alibaba and to not make changes or engage in extended analysis without permission. If any company annou announcements oppose the official stance, do not publish, do not repost, do not quote foreign media. I think we're foreign media, Will. I don't know if you knew mm -hmm. that. That's us. Yeah, they're coming for us. Crazy. Government mouthpiece The People's Daily has criticized China's tech industry for pursuing ever higher market concentration. <laughs> this directive is severe and unusual. A research scientist at the University of Cal California at Berkeley School of Information. The language of this directive is quite similar to the directives on very important political events. So they're just going hard in the paint, hmm. as you would say. And there's a little graph there mapping the October comments to uh, Alibaba's stock price. And you can see it hasn't been good since. People are worried worried and skeptical the longer that this guy stays out of the limelight and people wonder about uh, his ability to keep making moves mm -hmm. in the presence of obviously conflict or uh, at least a disagreement. Mm -hmm. So curious to see where it goes, curious to see when we hear from him. Uh, I think he's just really burnt up about missing out on what would have been the world's largest IPO. And I think mm -hmm. he was sitting there saying, I'm about to make moves. I'm about to break records. And they were like, no, you're not. And he's like, oh, really? You're Been working a long time, time on this, guys. Yeah. I got the ant group. Been working on this a long time. Talking about an IPO, 37 billion, something like this. What was it, 37? It was a big number, Will. Main thing is it was going to break records. Mm. And uh, obviously, they put a nail in that. And he's been a bit burnt up ever since. So we'll see if they can patch it up. Mm -hmm. Lenovo put out a weird, a weird rotating display all-in-one computer thing. Which, it's a sign of the times, Will. Mm. You know, people, on, people watching TikTok. And so now they want their all-in-one computer to also have a portrait mode. Now, monitors have had portrait mode for a while, which you can use for, yeah. you know, maybe a graphic designer, a photo editor, something like this. I think uh, programmers. Programmers like also, portrait. they like to have a vertical oh. monitor. But what's weird here is that's an all-in-one computer, the whole thing. And uh, the premise is less around that and more around the idea that, I don't know, what do you do? You put it in your kitchen with TikTok? You need that quick TikTok access? Interesting. I don't know yeah. what you need. Do people consume TikTok on a monitor they do now. display? They do now. Yeah, with Lenovo's hefty. Yeah, uh, uh, with the uh, with monitor. with the uh, the Yoga AIO seven. That's what they do. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what they do. So it's a twenty-seven inch monitor capable of landscape or vertical. They actually, I don't know if you remember. I think it was Samsung put out a TV that could do this, mm -hmm. but it was motorized and yeah. it would do it. The thing for me is always. Am I going to go through the effort if I'm watching a vertical piece of content to do the whole flipperoo? Because it's more the time component of watching it spin around and everything else. Or would I just watch it crop? It does look super cool. It's in portrait mode. Tell you what, it's like a piece of art or something. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, they're saying it's helpful for long documents and things like this. It also has a kind of cool feature where if you plug a laptop into it, uh... You'll be able to use all of the computer's hardware, hmm. the display speakers, mouse, and keyboard, and the power supply, and the hard drive will be accessible directly from your laptop with a single USB oh. connection. Cool. It's kind of a cool little feature. It's going to be a little bit expensive, I guess, starting at 1600 bucks. The Yoga AIO 7. This next one, oh my goodness gracious, this really, I really got into this. Okay. You know, I was watching those Mandalorians. Yeah. And uh, I just thought it was so well done, like the production. Uh-huh. I was sitting there and I was kind of, I, I, I really, it didn't cross my mind, oh, how did they do this? I just assumed this cost money. And I was right. It costs money. Certainly as far as TV series are concerned, you're talking about 15 million per episode. To make. To make. Yeah. But even at the 15 million per episode, I was sitting there thinking, it feels kind of different from other 
science fiction movies that I've seen. I just, it, I don't know what it was. It felt a little bit different. Yeah. And it turns out it might be a reason why I felt that way. Well, okay, what's that? They were using micro LED displays in place of green screens to shoot this. And Sony is going to put this product out in an effort. That's a good scene. Pause it right there. That scene is utilizing micro LED, not green screen. And no, Will, they did not travel to a cave that looked like that. I am talking about a 360 degree micro LED setup. Mm -hmm. You stand in the middle of it. Yep. Oh, you want, you want to talk about this? Like you actually want to say what this is about. No, I was thinking we should get it for the studio. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Like a new later set or something. But you're talking about this right now, like as if you read this article already. I did, yeah. Ah! I sent it to you. You didn't even look. When like did you send it to A couple days you? ago. Oh, wow. Like two days ago. I was like, this could be a LLC. Oh, oh, my bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. This guy. All right. Willie Do wins this round big time. He wins no, by. But he, I agree. Willie Do wins this round by knockout. There is an cool. incredible video done by. Uh, insider they do there's a video posted at the bottom by insider that is the best representation of explaining how complicated this is but why it's better and i'll just do a quick synopsis but i do recommend you watch the video from insider when you're on a green screen you get this weird green cast reflection on everything it's called spill it's disgusting because you're lighting up all these green walls when you have micro led instead running unreal engine hmm. with parallax effect so when the camera moves so does the background all of the light being cast on the actor's face is authentic to the types of colors yes. that would be lighting them had they been in that environment not to mention the actor feels like they're in an actual scene yes very immersive Instead of being in a weirdo green room, I've been on movie sets before, blue screen, giant blue screen set, and it feels like you're in an aquarium, and you look at people acting, and you're like, God, yeah, that's rough. This is very make-believe. Yikes. But they didn't have that in The Mandalorian. Uh -huh. They had this new technology, and they could do it in a much smaller footprint as well because of it. Tremendous video. You should definitely go watch it. This stuff is going to be made available for uh, other sets. Sony's going to make this available uh, very shortly. You know, the thing about Sony as a company, what's interesting, Will, you, you know that they do, they make TVs and TV technology, but they also do a ton of productions through Sony Pictures. So they're this weirdly integrated company that knows what's necessary on the film set. Yes. But then can make the technologies themselves to make it better. Yes. Through, through what they've done here. And when you look at the lighting, it's like, it's kind of like the actor is a character in a video game. And the camera, as the character moves through the space, the space is changing with them to fit right. the scene. It's and all programmed, Unreal Engine, epic. That is very cool. And less uh, production time, because you don't have to add reflections to shiny surfaces because it's not green it's actually reflecting the color yes it's less less post-production yeah. and a better look overall when it's all said and done now it doesn't work for everything they had to use some green at different points uh some green screen but what they would do in those situations look how great that looks so that's just micro led behind the guy and they do a, a special matte surface on it. I'm way Look too at the excited. Reflections, yeah, it's very cool. I'm way too excited, obviously. But if you do have to do green, you just bring green on the displays. They can do green. Mm -hmm. They can do anything. So it's it's really amazing. Watch the clip. Way better explanation than what I just did. And could be the future of filmmaking. The green is terrible. Yeah. Obviously, whenever necessary to avoid the green. All right. The next one, since we're in the weird portion of the show, the next one. I don't even know how to present it it is a nap time pillow slash blanket slash stuffed creature okay. uh, is it is it pokemon i don't know anything it is a pokemon okay so it's called gengar gengar or That's gengar a pokemon Gen gengar gengar is a pokemon okay 
I guess, what does he like to do? Eat a lot or, 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 or open his mouth and stick his tongue out? What does he like to do? I would believe so. He has a big mouth. Okay, so what you're supposed to do, you get this giant plushy thing and you stick your head inside of his mouth when you want to take a nap. Oh. Uh, and you lay down because it's a soft, his tongue is a soft surface that okay. you can lay down on. Yes. If you scroll down, you'll see other ways in which you can shove your head into his. You see that? And it's dark inside of there, so you catch a quick nap. Mm. Okay, see, that makes more sense than the one that... Could you nap like that, Will? Just, can you nap like that? Uh, With your well, head inside there, a right? Gengar. Inside a Gengar? Yeah, sure. I, I don't mind. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know what? You can't because these are already sold nope. out. Oh. Because Pokemon is so oh. hot right now. This crazy Gengar sleeping head thing. Okay. Pre order sold out in less than two hours. How much was it? $250. Oh, okay. Uh, even though it's not going to ship until June 2021, which I don't know why that is, but hmm. Pokemon is hot right now. Including giant Pokemon that you st where you stick your head in their mouth for yeah. sleep time. Burger King is doing a whole revamp to all of their branding. What's funny is, I looked at it and I was like, this revamp feels like their old stuff. Like it feels like an old logo, sort of. And sure enough, it is. It's inspired by their old logo. I don't know if you remember what their current logo looks like. It's got the it's more round and it has like a blue swoosh. Yeah, that yeah. thing. Yeah. And let's get since you're a big logo guy, yeah. let's get your take from that right there to the new one right there. Um, it definitely has an old school vibe. I like this one better. You like uh, the new old looking one? Yeah. No blue. Well, anyway, they said they got rid of the blue because there's no food items that are blue. Correct. And it doesn't look as appetizing. Okay, yeah, it doesn't feel like food. And they yeah. got rid of the shine on the burger because they said right. buns don't shine. Is what they said. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Now, it's not just the logo that got revamped. They revamped the whole, all the outfits, the restaurants. Uh, yeah, there, oh, that's a better side-by-side side -by -side comparison over there. It does, that Burger King on the right does make me hungry. Mm -hmm. The left one, not at all. Yeah. This looks like a game or something. Right. Like a retro game hmm. icon. An arcade game. And But anyway, yeah, if you scroll down, you can see that all of the colors are inspired. Go down a little bit more. All of the... A little bit more. There you go. All the colors are inspired by the actual burgers. Mm. So everything in the store is going to be come from the burger itself. So you would have red because you have a tomato. You yeah. would have brown because you have a patty. You would have a yellow because you have a bun or green because you have lettuce. So everything inspired by the food itself. And uh, if you scroll down to the very bottom, you will see even more branding with the outfits. And I mean, there, that's a cool shot with all of the wrap, yeah, wrappers and things. Ties everything together. It's kind of a cool vibe. I don't know. Yeah. Call me crazy. It's like a cartoon kind of too. It's how you would picture a burger shop yeah. in a cartoon. Kind of generic in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like if you had the little kids play set with burgers. Yeah. The burger it has place, all the right colors. Is, it would be like that. Yeah. And uh, and the restaurant itself actually is going to look a little cooler, which is uh, I think the very last slide. That's from the outside, and you can see the inside. It's really updated. Oh. And uh, and I think it's a much nicer look. Now apparently they're not going to force the restaurants to do these big upgrades right now. You know, the circumstance with restaurants maybe not doing the greatest in mm -hmm. 2020 and whatnot, but uh, franchise owners can upgrade to this whenever they see fit. Yeah. Pretty cool rebrand. <laughs> okay, so this next one is kind of strange. I saw this post on Jalopnik. Uh, uh, just watch this Japanese video of a snowy roof because it's so very satisfying. All right. This looks like it's going to be a good time. Like I click on this and I'm like, oh, I'm, a, I'm in for a good time. Right? Yeah. But I scroll down and I don't know if this has ever happened to me before. Mm. I scroll down to where the video should be and I can't find a video to click on. And then right below where the video should be, it says update. 
Damn it, they deleted the tweet, the whole account. Why? I'll see if I can find another source. Sorry. That's the person who wrote the article on Jalopnik. Hmm. Are you following me here, Will? Yeah. This article now ceases to serve any purpose at all. Uh huh. And so he couldn't even find another video. Exactly. Yeah. And the account that posted it delete yeah. is deleted. Yeah, well, that's just mean. So what happened? Did the account, once it got covered by a website and started getting traffic, were they like, whoops, I can't show this clip for some reason? It got me really curious because mm. it just seems odd. But anyway, I couldn't solve the mystery. I didn't have the time, yeah. but I realized that I couldn't leave it like that either. I had to seek out snow removal from a roof. Yeah, you were really uh, ready for this video. I, I just had to go figure yeah. it out. I had yeah. to be like, okay, what's so cool about snow removal from a roof? Now, in this case, I'm guessing it all slides down at once, mm -hmm. but I went on YouTube as you would do because mm -hmm. I needed to put some closure on this entire experience that I had. And so yeah. if you click over to the next YouTube link there, this is the one I selected. Bet, look, look, look at this title. This is a whole genre of content. Best, biggest, deep roof, very fast removal snow, Alaska method. It hits all the keywords. Roof <laughs> shoveling. I was like, this is a whole thing. And many, many multi-million view pieces of content, including yep. some breaching the 10 million view count. But anyway, I want you to click the play button here to look at this amazing method for snow removal which is oh so satisfying, turning the snow into wonderful rectangular cubes mm. as they are quickly removed from a roof at an incredible speed. Yes, very I efficient. I apologize for anybody just listening, but this guy has some sort of a contraption. You can actually leave it running because there's another okay. really good one. But I think people like all these removal methods. People enjoy all snow removal, Will. Uh -huh. It yes. can be a shovel. It can be uh, a snow blower. It can be the special contraption that the guy was using. This. Look at this contraption. Wait, look. Look at it. It's like an assembly line, the way these things come down. Now, he has a simpler version than the last guy. It is so amazing, isn't it? And oddly satisfying, uh -huh. which is ultimately the thing that I was looking for. So... Anyway, there you so have you're it. You're satisfied. If you, yeah, if you need to, if you need to see some snow removal, don't let the removal of that one tweet from the Jalopnik article get you down. YouTube is full. It is a vast landscape of satisfying snow removal for your pleasure.